It's jammed open. Come on, record, Darren. Locked open. Yes, well, it works. It cycles. It's me right in the forehead with the brass. <laughs> Ejecting. All right. That is painful. Maybe I'll mill the grip down. I uh, know. <laughs> but it's a real positive. Aim up, bro. It really digs in. Aim up, nigga. <laughs> He's super low. Keep. Trigger didn't reset. Nope. No reset on the trigger. No reset on the trigger. No reset on the trigger. Oof. So I've identified the issues that we encountered with the Block 19 while test firing. Uh, the trigger is resetting again. And it appears that it is back up and running. I think that I'll be able to put a number more rounds through it uh, the next time I go to the range before the frame fails or something else comes apart somewhere in the fire control group. So just listing through the issues, number one, this takedown wedge was made out of too thin sheet steel. I used 2.5 millimeter but I needed 1 8 inch because that's the width of the channel. I, I knew this ahead of time, I just didn't have any 1 8 inch sheet steel on hand, so I made do and just wrapped this with some duct tape to keep it relatively tight in the channel. The effect this had was that it allowed the slide to go slightly forward of the rear of the trigger housing, if you're able to see where I'm pointing right here. Uh, this actually didn't cause any functional issues, but it was a red herring and we thought that was causing functional issues. So the two problems that were actually causing functional issues were one, the trigger bar had come disconnected from the trigger spring. I'm not exactly certain when this occurred. It could have happened when I was playing around with it and assembling it. It could have happened when everybody was finger fucking it the day before we test fired it, or it could have happened during test firing for some reason. I don't really think those latter two could have happened simply because there's no real way geometrically for that to occur in my mind, but it's possible. Uh, I don't think that's what was actually causing the issues, but obviously it's not good for it to be assembled wrong. Um, because after I reattached that, the trigger still did not function, the trigger still did not reset. So what I think was actually causing the issues here was that the trigger bar was rubbing against the frame right here. Uh, this was causing the disconnect to not function, the trigger bar was not jumping up after firing. Uh, or rather after the disconnect was pushed to the side by the slide, which was causing the trigger to fail to reset. Uh, so I remediated this just by using a knife to remove about half a millimeter of material right here and make it so that they're no longer contacting. I think maybe this could have occurred due to the wood warping. It did get a little bit wet the day before because it was left outside overnight. Um, 
it's a possibility. It could also be that some carbon got in here or maybe that the frame itself just shifted a little bit. Potentially the two sides could have come, uh, come unattached a little bit. But whatever the case, after removing that material, the trigger now is functioning as it should and the gun as a whole is now back up and running. I will try to put some more rounds through it the next time that I'm at the range.